Hey everyone and welcome to another term of the Foundation Patreon. My name is Matthew Zickery and I'm here today with John Park and Daniel Park. And today I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through continuing on matte surface rendering. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and render out these, these shapes just first in their basic geoforms. So for those of you who haven't seen the past digital demo regarding rendering basic geoforms, this is kind of a just a sped up version of that. Um, this is going at right now four times the speed of the recording. I believe it took about just an hour total while I was doing these. And you can see what I'm doing right now is I already had my shapes laid out and you know I had them laid out in the proper perspective, got a nice composition that I wanted for you guys. And now I'm creating some masks, so that way when I start to render the objects in all the different sides, I can have just a simple mask, like what you can see I did right there, is I toss it in as a clipping mask. So I can be as sloppy as I want as long as I have these essential masks to begin with. So it doesn't matter what value we're going to assign them. We're going to take care of all the shading later. I like to group my objects as well so that way I can have my cube separate from the sphere and the cylinder as well as the cone. So what I'm showing you guys here right now is kind of something that I, I actually just developed this trying to find an easy way to divide a rectangular object into thirds. So I'll just take the X method and then I'll go diagonal from one section of it, one corner to the midway point. And then I'll kind of just duplicate that by going through the middle. And that gives me a nice, you know, thirds. It's very, very close to a perfect one third section all the way across. Which, if any of you ever tried plotting a third in perspective, can, you know, understand it can be a total pain. Um, you can guess it, but since I'm working with a cube here, which you also have to make sure that you have a perfect cube in perspective, I want to be as close as I can. So, you know, feel free to also play with your object. Just, it doesn't have to be perfectly brand new. And what you can see I'm doing here is I'm actually just kind of making it look like it's a little bit used. You know, maybe some of these stickers or someone tried peeling them off. They tried cheating and actually peeling it and putting it onto a different cube. So it's kind of that textured chalk brush mask that I applied there. You know, this one right here. Maybe let's see if we can bend one of the corners. We'll just erase into it and re repaint it. And all you really have to do is just erase some of it and add a little shadow under it, and you'll have a bent corner. The sticker itself doesn't have too much thickness, but that's why you just have a, to add a little bit of a shadow to show that it's lifted. So what I'm doing real quick, and I wanted to make sure to show you guys, is I'm going to go ahead and create a custom brush. And the reason for this custom brush is I just wanted to save me some time in Photoshop for doing the stitching. So I'm just going to take one line and kind of have it go out at an angle. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a hole at the end of it and that's where the stitch kind of, you know, fits in the ball. The thread that is. And then after we have it, I'm going to duplicate it and move it down. And you can definitely paint this like, you know, one by one if you wanted to, but since it's a repeated object, I thought creating a brush would be a lot quicker for me. Move it downwards, just nudge it, then bring it forward to you know, just a decent stitching that I'd want for my baseball. Edit the fine brush preset, and let's play with the settings now and see if we can kind of get something like what we want. And if you see if you use the pen tool, you can have that brush selected and hit enter, and it'll stroke it to your path. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to make this a little bit thinner. I'll go ahead and I'll alt click on my layer. That gives me a selection. I will then go ahead and either go to select and then selection and hit contract. Basically, it's going to take away a couple pixels. 
or if you do a inverse selection you can hit the delete button a couple times and it kind of deletes a little bit around the edges so if you're just trying to delete a little bit it's a nice little trick And if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to just email me and I'll be happy to help you if any of this stuff isn't making too much sense for you guys. It's uh, MatthewZickery at Yahoo.com. Just email me over there. Or if you guys want to hit up the Brainstorm J Park email as well, that works. Alright, so now we're working with the stitching. Once again, Anatomy of the Baseball is this is red stitching, so the value is going to be somewhere in the middle. It's not going to be, you know, too dark or too bright. At least anatomy on this baseball I'm doing is red stitching. Kind of did that little cheat which I told you. Invert the selection so I can delete a few pixels. We're going to have the light on top with shadow on bottom. And then it's going to reverse a little bit as we get to the opposite end. And when you guys select your objects, I want to make sure that you just select something not too difficult. If you take a notice at all these objects, they're all relatively just simple shapes. Cube sphere, cylinder cone. If there's anything added to it, which will actually be in the, the cup right here, just gonna add a handle. But they're all very basic shapes. You don't wanna go too like complex and compound from the get-go. Just make sure it's something that we can render out so when we understand our complex and compound like shapes and how they interact with each other, it'll be a lot easier. All right, and I think I think that's just about it. Let's see if we can just darken that a little bit. Can't play with the ground too much because of our cast shadows, but just brighten it up a little bit. And it looks like we're gonna call that done. Look forward to seeing you guys' submissions. Thanks so much, guys.